Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we're going to return it to the Orkney Islands which is the first set of islands off the north coast of Scotland and for those of you watching in America and Canada and New Zealand, Australia, these kind of countries, this is probably one of the most easy Scottish craft breweries for you to come across. So this is the Orkney Brewery and we're going to have a taste of their Dragon Head beer today which is a stout. I believe in these countries though the, the beer that you're most likely to find from these guys is probably the Northern Light, the Dark Island or the Skull Splitter. I'm not sure if they actually export this one too much, but I've heard that it is very nice. But if you do come across Orkney, the Orkney Brewery beers, you won't be disappointed by any of them. They're all really, really good beers, so do give them a try. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews, I will take you through a very short history of the brewery. It will only be a few minutes long, but if you do want to go straight to the tasting, just fast forward. The brewery website's in the description for you below, along with a link to the other reviews that I've done from these guys before, and there will be a few more added to that in the very near future. Now anyway, as I mentioned to you, Orkney is the first set of islands just off the north coast of mainland Scotland and these guys are particularly famous for having some of the best preserved archaeological sites in Europe and this is in particular the Scarabray prehistoric village which has UNESCO World Heritage status but they estimate that this is about 5,000 years old and the cool thing about it is we wouldn't have actually known that it was there. The only thing that revealed it was a kind of storm in 1850, a huge big storm that ripped up the ground and then they discovered all these kind of stones sticking out and then they went and excavated it so if that storm hadn't passed then we really wouldn't have known it was there but an interesting thing about Orkney and Shetland as well is that these islands, the sets of islands, have a very strong Nordic culture. There's a lot of people called Magnus and in fact if you go to Kirkwall there is the main cathedral there is called St Magnus Cathedral and um, it was only in 1468 actually that these islands became Scottish and this was due to the fact that one of the Scottish monarchs married a Danish princess I believe it was. It might have been the other way around but there was a, a marriage between one of the Danish monarchs and one of the Scottish monarchs and um, this was why the islands became Scottish. Scottish. It was meant to be a dowry present or something like that. But um, yeah, so there's a whole, there's a lot of Nordic heritage up there, which is very interesting. But to tell you about the brewery itself, the brewery is currently owned by a guy called Norman Sinclair, and he's an award-winning hotelier, and he has very many properties actually throughout Scotland. And Norman was originally born in Orkney, but he moved to Fort William at a young age and worked in the family aluminium business. But in 2006, he set up his own company called Sinclair Breweries Limited, and this went on to acquire two breweries. This was the Orkney. Orkney Brewery and the Atlas Brewery. Now the Orkney Brewery was founded in March of 1988 by Roger White at the old schoolhouse in Sandwick in Orkney in Scotland and the Atlas Brewery was founded in Fort William by in 2002 by Neil Cotton and this merged with the Orkney Brewery in 2004 under the Highlands and Islands Breweries and this came about due to the retiral of Roger White and then the subsequent acquisition of shares by the Atlas Brewery and Neil Cotton from the Atlas Brewery actually served as Managing Director of Highlands and Islands Breweries for a short period of time and he drove a series of changes in particular at the Orkney Brewery but this company was then purchased by Sinclair Breweries in 2006 and they did move their operations completely to the Orkney Brewery and they do brew the Atlas range of beers there too. They all have the Orkney Brewery cap on them but they do say they're the Atlas range of beers so quite cool that they did preserve that with the Orkney Brewery. But the brewery is still based in the same old schoolhouse in Coilu that it was founded in and this is just a mile from the Scarabray prehistoric village I was telling you about earlier. But the brewing is carried out by three employees, Andrew Fulton who was a graduate of the uh, the Heriot Watt Brewing Programme, he joined in 1994. There was Kevin Sarling who's Lon from London, he was involved in transport before brewing in 2005 and there's also Magnus Flett there who's a former farmer and he joined the brewery in 2001. But these days the, the brewery have expanded quite a lot and you can get their beer all over the place. To list the other beers that you can get from these guys, you get the Northern Light as I mentioned to you before, that's a pale ale, Red McGregor which is a red ale, Raven Ale which is a bitter, Dragon Head this guy here which is a stout, you also get the Skull Splitter beer and they also have a, a special beer called Corn Creek Ale which is a gold nail brewed to help the RSPB preserve the famous Corn Creek birds which comes to Scotland in the summer and they also have another one called the, uh, the the Clutie Dumpling which is their, their Christmas seasonal beer and it really does taste like Scottish Christmas cake so a very unusual one if you do see that definitely give it a go because it's one of the most interesting beers I've actually reviewed for you on the channel but their beers have won a number of awards and as I said you won't be disappointed by anything you try from this brewery but anyway let's get actually get on to the tasting of this beer so I'll bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one it's quite cool because it has the old Norwegian uh, or Nor uh, Scandinavian if you like 
dragon head ship on it and that's what it's named after. It says dragon head is a legendary stout, dark, intense and fully flavoured. It is our tribute to the Vikings and their cultural legacy that they left on Orkney. Tells you a little bit about the, the, it gives you a bit of tasting notes on the back as well, so if you are interested in that, do have a read at them, but I'm going to do it the old fashioned way and just drink the beer. It's signed on the front by Andrew Fulton, the head brewer, and um, yeah, it looks really nice. That is the typical Orkney Brewery bottle cap, as you can see the sort of Neolithical um, kind of artwork and stuff on it there, which is really cool. But yeah, it looks really nice. This is a stout beer. It comes in, I believe, at... 4.4% so it's actually quite a low ABV stout usually they're about 6 or something like that a bit stronger but yeah let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here and um, the dragon head, dragon head as I said to you were the boats that were used by the Vikings the malt base in this guy is roast barley and it also contains chocolate malts and wheat and it has some Goldings hops in it as well so it should be quite an interesting one for us to try as you can see nice smoky opening you can smell the chocolate off that as you open up the bottle, so very nice smelling beer. And it's very, you can see, very viscous actually as you pour it out. But I'm actually quite surprised that they do it with such a low ABV, but that tends to be one of the things with uh, the Orkney Brewery, their beers, despite being full of flavour, they do actually tend to be very, very low ABVs. But as you can see, it's actually poured really, really beautifully, this guy. So you can see it's got, actually got a very dark um, tan coloured head on it which is quite interesting. I'll just bring up the camera and check that you can see the colour of this beer properly. You can see the colour of the head there, properly kind of dark tanny colour. It's a two finger head as you can see. It's completely frothy, no real bumps in it at all. There's a bit of carbonation just sticking to the side of the glass, a lot of small bubbles there. And obviously if I put my fingers behind it you can't see it, but I think it's fair to describe that beer as being almost an ebony colour. I think I always describe them in terms of the guitar woods if you like, so you always get a kind of coppery amber, a rosewoody mahogany colour, but this guy is definitely ebony. It reminds me of these black fingerboards that you get on some classical guitars and stuff, but it looks absolutely beautiful. So in terms of the aroma with this guy, very chocolatey. As I said, without paying too much attention to the aroma, the first thing that will jump out at you is the kind of nice sweet chocolate. But you've got a dark roasted coffee element to the malt as well. And you can almost pick up just a little bit of rye bread coming out too. You sugar it up, you will get that sort of rye, kind of cereally bready character coming out of it. But you can pick up the sweet chocolate just underneath that. But there's a big kind of toasted, roasted caramel element to it as well. But some nice dark fruit as well, kind of figs and raisins and plums, but that's quite mild. I think it's a sharper, um, sort of sharper fruity element that it has to it, so more a kind of fig and raisins and plums, but it's more, the, the most um, prominent component of the aroma here really is the kind of roasted coffee and the chocolate in particular is what jumps out of this one. So without further ado, let's have a taste of the Dragon Head from the Orkney Brewery. Slange it. Very smooth actually. It's one thing I always find in comparison with the porters, as a bit of a, a the stouts always have a bit of a heavier mouthfeel and they do feel just a little bit smoother, which is really nice. Or just almost a little bit creamier actually. So yeah, you've got a nice dark roasted mouthfeel that comes out of this guy. It's, um, there's a good bit of coffee bitterness actually lingering in the flavour on this one. It's actually more of a coffee flavoured stout this and you're just getting that around the edges of the tongue at the back there. Very big roasted coffee flavour coming out of this guy. But yeah, as you go, go through the tasting of this one, you will feel a, a kind of wetness just go over the, f the, the middle of the tongue there. You do get a little bit of sweet caramel in there it just lies underneath it but you've got some sweet chocolate as well you've got this really interesting kind of balance in the middle of the mouth between the sweet chocolate and the kind of toasted caramel if you like but the lingering character in this beer really is the sort of a coffee bitterness so it's a really interesting blend of flavours this guy the fruit in this one is very mild and it comes out just like this really mild figgy character. It's got a really quite long-lasting 
slightly smoky coffee bitterness actually. It's mainly the coffee that is the ling the lingering component of the flavour there. But the smokiness when it does have sort of Golding's hops, that's when you get a little bit of an earthy character and you can detect that just around the edges of the tongue there. So it has this a this slightly ashy kind of um slightly smoky character about it as well actually. Yeah, so quite inter quite an interesting uh, an interesting beer this one actually. Yeah, as you go through it, it does progressively get a little bit smoother, but you've got a nice kind of toasted coffee. It's really got a big coffee bitterness that really lingers on the palate there, just at the back corners of the tongue there, but not quite at the edges. That's where you're getting. It's definitely a little bit of earthy character, and that'll be from the Golding's hops that they've put into this beer. The fruity character on this one as well just lingers just behind the very tip of the tongue there. You've got this oily character, and it's a kind of figgy fruit flavour that's coming out a little bit in this. But it's an interesting blend of flavours, this one. As I say, a nice kind of dark roasted malt in this, a good blast of coffee bitterness that just lingers there in the tongue, but you do have a bit of chocolate and caramel sweetness on this one, a sort of toasted caramel actually, that just sits at the back of the middle of the palate and then the sort of fruity ester kind of flavours coming out at the front, and just earthy kind of character around the edges of the tongue. So a very interesting blend of flavours. It's quite a smoky stout this one as well, which is, is quite interesting. It gives that kind of real Scottish uh, feel to it, if you like. In terms of the mouth feel, it's mid-bodied definitely. It's quite light for a stout actually. You can get ones that are a little bit heavier than that, but at the same time it is very smooth. So you maybe could say it's sort of mid to full bodied. It's not it's not too heavy, it's a nice tasting beer, this one, very very good dessert beer I should point out. This would be good for having with like vanilla and chocolate ice cream actually, so definitely give it a go with that. I'll need to, to get another bottle of this and maybe do that at some point, but as I say, very smooth mouthfeel. And it's got a slight creaminess to it as well, like I said, but it's got a nice long lasting coffee bitterness. So if you are into beers that have that particular flavour, this is one that you really should try and get a hold of. Very different actually from the... Uh, from the Dark Island. From what I remember, the Dark Island was a good bit sweeter than this. This is a good bit more bitter than the Dark Island beer, but they are very different styles. So if you do like a, a, a dark beer that's a bit sweeter, go for the Dark Island, but if you want one that's a nice big kind of roasted coffee brew, then definitely give the Dragon Head a grow. But this is a very nice beer, and as I said to you at the start of the video, um, a lot of the, the, all of the stuff that comes out of the Orkney Brewery, none of it you're going to be disappointed with. They're all very, very good beers. The only one I think I've still to try is the Raven beer and maybe the Red McGregor as well. So you will see me reviewing those for you at some point in the near future. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Go and check out the Orkney Brewery, as I said. Those of you watching in America, Canada and things like that, you will be able to find this beer over there, hopefully. I'm not sure about the Dragon Head, but you will find some of the breweries over there. Please let me know in the comments section, as always, your own thoughts on this beer. And please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this Scottish beer review, and I hope you're enjoying the other Scottish ones that I've done for you too. And please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, and I will catch you soon with the next one. Cheers!